What's happening, everybody? Josh Rosales here, and welcome back to the Breakthrough You podcast. The Breakthrough You podcast is where we focus on you, of course, our mindset, breaking through our mindset. Really, it's all about the mind, right? 50% of the problem usually lies with us. Uh, If we can ever get past our mindset, then we can accomplish anything. Um, What usually holds us back is our minds, ourselves. And, you know, the American dream is free, but they're just not handing it out, as some people would say. And so, um, you know, it's we talk about the hustle. We talk about the grind. We talk about entrepreneurship. We talk about, um, you know, just not throwing in the towel and, and overcoming the challenge or meet the challenge of um, whatever the goal, whatever the dream is that you want to achieve. You can do it. Um, you know, a lot of times that, you know, uh, a great person once said, used to bees and wannabes don't make honey and we got to make honey uh and so that's where a lot of entrepreneurs that whole mindset is we have to do it even though when it gets bleak you feel like throwing in the towel that's when you got to really just put yourself in check barrel down and just drive through it because on the other side of that challenge is usually success and you can either become a a victim or you can claim victory you just got to stick to it and a lot of times people don't want to reach the the, the mountaintop and they want to give up. But if you just keep going a little bit more, you're going to reach the pinnacle of the mountain. And so I'm super excited to have as our guest uh, today, Nora Shabayak. And what was your sister's, uh, what was your sister's name, Nora? And that's my sister and business yes. partner. Yes. Yes. And business partner. And we have met, um, we have met a little while ago. It's, it's actually probably been a couple of years now, maybe. Yes bank <laughs> yeah yeah at the bank and so uh um crazy excited to have you on and to just talk to you I got some questions lined up here and um you're just doing some amazing things and especially in the yoga um the yoga industry um and I mean yoga is huge in in Nashville and so I just want to thank you uh for coming on and spending some time with me today on the Breakthrough You podcast. Well, thank you so much, Josh, for having me. I'm honored. Definitely. So, um, so we're going to hop into this and, you know, going through, I think going, you know, anyone that is attached to your social media or looking at your social media um, can tell that family is huge to you. Like, I mean, we were just talking about that right before we came uh, on is that how important family um, is, um, the family union is to, uh, to each of us. And so, let me ask you, how important um, is family to you? I know it's a simple question, but. um, Yeah, it's family to me is pretty much everything I have. Mm. And I'm blessed to have such an amazing family. Like I, I, I shake myself all the time. I get to do what I absolutely love with my, my older sister and my best friend. And like, who better to be able to run a business with than your sister? So the, the closeness that we have is just something that I've always cherished, but then to be able to like see her every single day and make these business decisions together and knowing that she has, you know, my best interest at heart is huge. So that we have a wonderful mom that we look up to that's such a hard worker. Um, and um, I have two precious sons, a 10 year old and a five year old. So my family is really what wakes, wakes me up and keeps me going every day. They give me that inspiration and it's, it's a blessing. You know, it's, um, I know that my wife and, uh, and her sister, um, they probably couldn't be in business together because they probably beat at each other's throats. Um, and a lot of times that that's not a, a really good dynamic to have. They say, don't get into business with family, but for you and your sister, it seems like it's just, you just mesh. I mean, it's just, you're you're so good at being in business together and what what causes that for y'all to be such an alignment with everything I think it's a mutual respect uh for each other she respects certain things about me that I bring to the table for the business and I respect the things that she brings to the table um and you know she's my older sister so I have this like this already reverence towards her and this like um knowing that she always has, I said, my best interest at heart, such a, a level-headed, 
rational type where I can be a little bit more emotional and a little bit more reactive that um, when I'm like really high in my emotion, she grounds me. And then when, you know, when, when I need to bring her to that level, I bring her to that level. So I would say our weakness, my weaknesses are her strengths and her strengths is my weakness, my weaknesses. So it's just, we're able to balance each other out in that sense. Dina has a very interesting background. Um, she, uh, she was a DA for a really long time in Davidson County um, and loved her job and was really, really good at it. Um, and then decided to um, kind of branch off and, um, and open her own law firm. She became a criminal defense attorney with some of her colleagues and she was doing that for a few years. So I, I, at that point I was running Fahrenheit by myself. I'd started Fahrenheit and was running it by myself. Um, and just had reached a point where I felt like I had taken the brand as far as I knew how to take it and um, tapped her. And I kept asking her, help me, help me. I can't do this by myself. She's like, I have court on Monday. What are you talking about? Like, <laughs> help you. And I think I asked her on the right day and we've been in business ever since. So how, walk us through the journey of you and your sister or, or you from how did you get into yoga? How did you get into Fahrenheit yoga? What led you to open up um, the business? Um, like what does, does yoga and fitness running your family, entrepreneurship running your family? Like how did all that come into play? Yeah, so um, Dina and I have always been kind of big gym rats, you know, like where we just worked out all the time. For me, I got into to specifically hot yoga in college. Um, I was going through like an awful breakout breakup and I heard that like yoga was not only hot yoga was not only a good workout but it like emotionally like a good release mm -hmm. so I started going to a hot yoga studio in town it was the only hot yoga studio and that was over a decade ago and um it was just the release that I got from it it just was unmatched and so I going and then I decided to get yoga teacher training like the day after I graduated from Belmont my mom was not happy about that she's like are you being serious what did your like, mom want you to be real quick real quick well I mean I ended up using it I went to Belmont for entrepreneurs for okay. the for the entrepreneur program and yeah. business um and mass communications but I ended up using it but I I literally was like I want to be a yoga teacher the day after I graduated so she was hoping that I would probably go into business sooner rather than but they you know my mom and dad and, and sister always supported that dream of mine and um so I became a yoga teacher started teaching for like a year and then I kind of decided this is something that I love so much I want to share on a larger scale so that's when I decided to open up Fahrenheit and Brentwood with the blessing of my whole family so so is is Fahrenheit a um a um franchise or is that your your brand you came up with it and how did you come up with it you know, I, I had such a great mentor um, and she, she was the lady that owned the hot yoga studio in town at the time and kind of learned and mentored under her. And then she decided to sell her studio and, and go kind of travel and, and be a traveling yogi. And I had her blessing. And so at that point, I just took all the things that I'd learned under her leadership and, and tried to like make it better if that makes any sense no definitely and so, aesthetics something really big for me and so I wanted to I wanted to have good teachers good heat and in a beautiful space and and that's what I did in Brentwood um and we were there for six and a half years and then Dina joined me and we closed down Brentwood and opened 12 South and so that's, that's a all. lot of traffic 12 South is a fun neighborhood yeah yeah we love it so let me ask you this, um, two questions. How important is, uh, is mentorship, not only in your life, but in the life of a entrepreneur? And then where would you be if you didn't have that, that mentorship? I think mentorship is, is like the foundation that it's built. If it's like, if I didn't have the knowledge that was like grace gracefully given to me by my mentor, like Fahrenheit wouldn't exist today in, in the capacity that, that it exists. It's, she gave me so much valuable information um, 
of like, you know, there's a lot of technical things that go into running a hot yoga studio. It's heat. It's, you know, it's, uh, she taught me how to teach hot yoga. She taught me how to, um, how to run a business, you know? So I think that for me, that was everything. Cause it's one thing to go to, to college and like learn like the books and mm-hmm. but to, like see it in action from someone that is, is doing it successfully. For me, I learn by experience, not by reading a book, if that makes sense. No, exactly. They say that experience is often the best teacher. Totally. Yeah, totally. Uh, totally agree with that. Um, do you think that a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, maybe they make the mistake of thinking they can do it on their own and they don't look at, they don't look for a mentor, maybe in their field or someone that is successful. Um, there's a saying that says, you know, success leads clues. And I'm, I'm always of the opinion of if I can find somebody that's being successful in what they are doing or in what I want to do, then all I need to do is I need to ask, I need to really, um, you know, really look for what they're doing and then mimic what they're doing and then talk to them. I mean, I think a lot of entrepreneurs, they, they feel like they can do it on their own and then they fall flat on their face. I don't, is that what you kind of see I I see that I do also feel like for me I think a a certain like layer of humility needs to go into being um a mentoree is that the right word for me Mm -hmm. go to my my teacher and my mentor and be like hey teach me everything that you know that's not like it should be like who are you like I don't need to teach you know what I'm saying I worked for many years like under her and really like had that humility of like, I just want to be of service to you in this community that I believe in so much. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying work for free, but there has to be this like level of like, of like wanting to learn without wanting to get at first, mm-hmm. I think. And like really having that kind of service like part. Cause I feel like if someone were just to come up to me or Dina today and be like, teach me everything, you know, I'd be like, uh for a consulting fee you know yeah saying? exactly or versus someone that someone that is coming to your your studio and is working and is putting in the the sweat equity and has put in the time put in the sweat put in the um, oh. blood and is now coming to you and saying hey this is a passion this is a calling that i have that i want to do as well and maybe i want to branch out would you um, impart to me um, the knowledge versus, like you said, someone just coming to you and saying, hey, would you just teach me everything you know? Exactly. Yeah. So um, as an entrepreneur, what are some of the challenges and successes that Fahrenheit has um, gone through over the years? I, you know, we've, we've overcome quite a bit. Um, when we were in Brentwood, we were in a lease situation as a landlord in a medical facility um, off of Old Hickory Boulevard and Granny White. And it worked for us for six and a half years. And then it started getting kind of an unmanageable where the community was growing. But I got in, a, in like a really kind of unmanageable situation with the landlord where they were not liking how many people were taking up the parking and wanting to control. Mm. So, um, that's when Dina and I made a really tough decision to close the doors and not renew that lease at that location. And we knew that like we needed to to own our own real estate and build from the ground up because a hot yoga studio with the scale that we wanted to do it at takes hundreds of thousands of dollars. And we're putting it into Mm -hmm. someone else's building that can be just destroyed at any minute. So Dina and I faced a really hard decision that we closed the doors at Brentwood and we didn't have anywhere to go. And the business wasn't failing, it was thriving. And it just was a really hard kind of leap of faith that we had to take. And we spent about um, from June, from June of 2017 until November looking for real estate. And we finally found that piece of property in 12 South. And then it took two years to build it. So we were closed and dormant for two years, building the Mm -hmm. new studio. And that was hard because we had fears of like, are we going to have our people come back to us when we reopen? Our teachers went and taught other places and it was hard to see them go move on, but we knew that they had to, you know? But I remember a a time, a day specifically, I was crying to Dina. I'm like, it's over, it's Fahrenheit's over, it's never. She was like, it's not over. It's gonna, we're gonna open again and it's gonna be better than you ever even imagined. And she has 
kept that promise. <laughs> Dina has maximized the brand. She really has. How, how has she maximized it? Because I think where my, where I fall short is like, I'm more of the creative, like, la, 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 la. Like I can pick out some damn good teachers. I can make a really mm -hmm. bad example. But when it comes to like rules and this is how our studio is going to function and the tiny little details to make it a well-oiled machine, she's so good at that kind of stuff and putting mm -hmm. the system in place and executing those systems. And she's just a businesswoman. That's so good. every aspect of the business. You know, it's so important that when you are in business, that you have somebody like that, um, whether it's a business partner or family member that you're in business with. Um, and I think you need that because if everybody was like me or everyone was like you, then there would be challenges, more challenges probably um, to the business. Um, so how long has, and you, and you alluded to this, but how long has Fahrenheit Yoga been in existence? We um, in existence since 2011. 2011. And then when you closed the, the doors to your studio in Brentwood, and then when you reopened in 12 South, did a lot of your clients come back? How did you keep in touch with them? Or did you do any online classes while you were um, no, closed down? I didn't do any online classes just because like a big part of the magic is the heat for mm -hmm. us. It's just really hard to kind of capture the essence of Fahrenheit. That's true. Um, but we, we tried to like, you know, I think the way that Dina and I business and the way that we communicate with our clients is different than maybe what, what like society tells us how we should run business. We don't talk to our people unless it's like an important thing that we have to say. I don't like to bombard our clients with emails or announcements unless it's something of value. And so really mm -hmm. we kind of quiet until we were like, all right, doors are opening in a month, you know? Um, so we, we definitely kept in touch with our teachers and recruiting new teachers for the new space, but we kind of kept quiet for those two years. So where did the, uh, the brand Fahrenheit come from? Who thought that up? I'm pretty sure it was me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Creative. Yeah. That's a yeah. really cool name. Like Fahrenheit yoga. Like that is, that is real cool. So you got two story building 12 South and you got locker rooms like tell us a little bit about the facility yeah it's just I, I love it so much it just makes me so happy so um it's about five thousand square feet and it's a two-story building a standalone building in 12 south um and the downstairs you walk in and there's the lobby to the left of the lobby we have a teacher training room because we do do teacher trainings a few times a year where we train people to become yoga teachers and then we have locker locker rooms that have showers just because of the hot yoga you want to shower afterwards so a lot of people go to go straight to work after their morning classes um and then uh, on the second level is our office and then the hot room and i love the hot room just because it has these florida uh kind of mid-ceiling windows not lots of natural light um lots, it kind of feels open and airy so that's cool so you get i mean plus 12 south i mean everything's on 12 south good food um, yeah, it's quite a few. Now, are there quite a few uh, exercise uh, fitness centers around 12 South? Yeah. So right next door to us, there is a Pilates studio. It's called Marathon Pilates. And then in that same building is Marathon Fitness. And it's an awesome personal training facility. We're really good friends with the owner. Um, what else is there? Oh. Jenny's ice cream. There's Jenny's. <laughs> Oh, Embers, we like, I think my personal favorite place to eat in 12 South is Embers. I don't know if you've ever been to Embers, but. Yes, yes, I've been there once. I like it. Yeah. So let me ask you this. How has the uh, the economy in Nashville, Middle Tennessee, has been really just taken oh, off? Um, I forgot to, I to interrupt, but I will tell you a big, huge reason why, D why Dina and I were able to reopen is First Horizon Bank. I have yes attitude to first horizon bank because they believed in us at a time where i was really worried about the business and they they knew what we were capable of and they knew that we could duplicate it so dina and i have a wonderful relationship with the sba um shay turner who we love dearly and tiona chapman at first horizon and they've just done everything to keep us where we you know keep us moving on in the right track so they're great they're great people 
We really are. I'm so yeah. Dina and I. So how has the uh, how has the economy uh, affected uh, Fahrenheit Yoga? I know Nashville is just growing. It's it's are you seeing a lot more traffic coming into to your place? Because uh, I mean, yoga is a pretty popular um, fitness. Yeah, it is. I think that it's been a little combination between COVID and the economy that has, um, I have seen a trend, you know, in our, with our, in our business. One, when we closed down, of course, we were closed down for two months during COVID from, I believe it was, I think it was May till June because all fitness facilities were closed down. When mm-hmm. we reopened, we open smaller capacity, just like 10 feet apart mat between mats. But we, um, during the time that we were closed, we kind of halted our memberships and then we resumed our memberships when we opened. And all of our students were super awesome and understanding about, about that. And they still wanted to come back. And then once kind of that, we were able to surpass the COVID hurdle. I think so many people, at least our community and our client base, they were like in desperate need of self-care that mm-hmm. like, was no longer like a luxury it was like not an it was a non-negotiable for people's mental health and so people have been going to yoga studios by the crowd you know it's not just our studio I think a lot of studios are really thriving just because people really need this for their mental health right now Mm -hmm. in um with how many people are moving to Nashville and South being kind of a popular area do um What's, what's unique about Fahrenheit yoga versus other yoga places? Maybe it's like, oh, we're better than them, but just what's unique about Fahrenheit yoga? What, what's unique about what um, you and your sister um, bring to the yoga industry here in Nashville? Honestly, I think without a doubt, and I know Dina would say this, our teachers are in- mm incredible we have such a great team and they're so good at what they do for Dina and I we wanted to pick out the best teachers in Nashville mm-hmm. and a lot of times yoga teachers don't get paid that great. and so and it's a shame because what they do is amazing for people oh, so yeah. we picked out the best teachers and a lot of them have been with us for many many years from the old location and we just give them we give them a rate that they're happy with and mm-hmm. they and that they they continue to invest their love and their energy into the students into the business into and so it trickles down from the teachers we love on the teachers and we let them know how important they are to us and we take good care of them and from there it trickles down to the students who felt feel taken care of because the teachers are taking care of them if that makes sense so I think yeah. it's special and I'm not saying like other studios don't do this but like I I really I could be completely biased, but I really do feel like we have the best team out of anything, anybody I've seen. I've traveled the whole country and been to many different studios. And I really think our teachers that, that make us, that's our secret sauce. And they feel, um, they also feel, uh, probably feel vested in the business. Like this is a part of my business. This is, um, you know, because you take great care of them, then they in turn take great care of your clients, uh, which your clients, uh, we'll turn around and spread the word, word of mouth. Um, and so, I mean, that's a great winning combination. I mean, I think that's with any business and especially with, you know, our nonprofit um, Breakthrough Nashville, we we go into Metro Nashville Public Schools uh, in Antioch and we do these coffee carts and we bring teachers breakfast uh, two, three times a month. And we just um, show the teachers the appreciation that they deserve and we we thank them for for everything that they do we celebrate them because a lot of times they don't get paid that much and they um, they don't get a lot of recognition uh, a lot of teachers right now um, you know there's there's a lot of teachers that are quitting um, and so it's just if we can go in there and shower them with thankfulness um, then we can do a little uh, a that's our part. And so you're absolutely right, Nora. I mean, um, and the students care of- schools, you know, and it's like mm-hmm. teachers have gone through with COVID. They've been through the ringer having yep. to teach and via Zoom. And yeah, that's amazing. I love that you guys. Do that. No, definitely. So that's cool. I mean, um, what's the tenure of, of some of your te- uh, teachers there? 
So we have teachers that have been with us where from, I would say nine, nine years is probably one of the highest um, and all the way until three years. So we did bring, most of our teachers, our newer teachers have been with us since we opened 12 South, which is three years. But these teachers that almost all the teachers that teach for Fahrenheit have been teaching for five years, sometimes 10 years. They're all senior level teachers. You know, um, I was, I look at your, uh, when I'm going through my, my social media feed and your, I think your favorite pose is, is standing on your hands. And yeah. I'm like, I have, I, I don't, I could not do that. I don't, how do you balance yourself? Like, I'm like, how in the world do you do that? There's uh, must well, be a lot well, of practice. Handstand is like my arch nemesis it's like I think the reason why you see so much of it on my feed is because like I haven't mastered it and I'm like trying so hard to get it it's one of those yeah. things like this is the last thing I do so I I work with one of my teachers twice a week um and she helps me one of the best oh, so not not only are you the 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 uh the owner the entrepreneur but you also your your teachers teach you Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They're my teachers are my teachers are my teachers. Like they teach me yoga. So yeah. tell me about that. How does, tell me about that. Cause a lot of, so, a lot of people don't have that mindset. Yeah, no, I think it's for me, like I, I have a certain knowledge of yoga, of course, but there's some of these teachers that they can do certain things with their bodies that like, I just, I inspired or inspired by. And so mm -hmm. I have one teacher who was my first yoga teacher ever that teaches for, for us. Oh, wow. And mm -hmm. she, I have such a special place in my heart for her because I've, I learned how to teach hot yoga from my mentor and from her. And mm -hmm. um, is at Fahrenheit. she's going to go spread her wings here in the next few months and open her own studio in Chattanooga. And I'm so excited for her. Oh, I love Chattanooga. I know, I know. Is it going to be a Fahrenheit yoga? Not. it's going to be her own thing it's going to be okay. it's that she's really worked really hard for and so that's going to be bittersweet for me to have my first teacher like move on and go do her thing you know but like but are you still I, there to support her though yeah for sure and she'll be back you know that's the thing she'll be like I'll come visit and I'll come teach classes and you can come to Chattanooga so um but yeah no I think that for me I don't I'm always a student first before anything else oh man yeah so I, and that's what keeps it exciting and, and fresh. I think, you know, that's, that's crazy. You say that because I think that, um, I always tell my team and I tell people like, I always want to have a student's mindset. Like I always want to be a student. I always want to be learning. You never know where or who, um, is going to come in your path where you can learn something. And we should always have our mind ready and receptive to be able to learn um, whether you're the, the, the teacher or, you know, the banker or the bank manager, like you're, you're never too far along to where you can't learn something and you never know where those nuggets of wisdom are going to come from. And so that's my, that's my whole thing is like, I always just want to be a student. I think that's, it's very important. You, you miss is. out a lot of learning opportunity. It is. And I think that's like where, you know, talk about mentorship and it's always, you're mm -hmm. always, you know. So where do you see um, Fahrenheit yoga in, in the future, next two, three, five years? So we're going to expand. It's, it's happening. It's just, um, it's not going to happen this year. We're, you know, in, comp, in contact with Tiona and Shay, and they know our dreams and our hopes. And um, it's just a matter of, of when, so not if. So and let me ask you this so is it going to be back in franklin next location i to be back in brentwood we'd love to go back to yeah and um that way it's just like you know going back to our roots and um yeah we're excited so we'll be doing a kind of purchase purchasing of real estate building from the ground up situation that'd be good that'd yeah. be good and prices right now are so incredibly expensive but yet on the flip side commercials probably not seeing maybe as big of a demand for that. So maybe there's maybe better think, deals to be had. It's just very, everything's very expensive. Yeah. And, yeah. So I don't know. And I don't know what is 
if you've heard anything about a recession coming or or what but i don't know my brother-in-law i was talking to him well i've been i was talking to him yesterday we were at his house uh swimming and i've been talking to a few real estate agents and whatnot and um some of the top agents you know they i don't i don't know if it's true or not they just say that this year is going to separate the boys from the men you know um <laughs> and so um yeah. it is getting tough it is getting tough out there with supply and demand but there's always there's always a deal to be had and uh, i always believe like if it's if it's meant to be the right door will open for you and everything will be it'll it'll work itself out so true in the right timing too yep the right timing exactly exactly uh, so we got the future expansions. Um, so when it comes to on our podcast, we um, I'm always asking everyone that, that comes on. I think self-development is so important. Uh, what we pour into ourselves, uh, if we're not pouring into ourselves, how can we pour into others? And so um, what's your what's maybe like a, a book that you're reading right now or an audio book podcast youtube channel like what how do you how do you pour into yourself nora um so that you can in turn pour into others and just that self-development for sure um well <laughs> i'm reading this book right now like it's not a self-development book it's like more fantasy type so i wouldn't tell you guys about this but um i um you know, for me, it's more just taking care of my physical body. Yeah. So mind can be as clear as possible. Um, so that's really my biggest thing. I eat healthy. I try to get enough sleep, um, do, do yoga, um, practice just like taking time with just me and my kids. Um, yeah. Drinking enough water. Um, I'm, I kind of like have exited this like time in my life where I'm constantly like trying to do self help and development just because I think I was so obsessed with it that I just like needed a break and just mm -hmm. wanting to like escape that fixing loop that like I need to fix something about myself you know what I'm saying yeah, so that's true um for me I'm just I guess it's just trying to take care of my physical vehicle so that I can be connected to my mind and my heart because if you don't have that physical vehicle you really don't have anything yes that's right so how do you balance um work or being a business owner family relationship like how do you how do you balance all of that being an entrepreneur you know you know i think that sometimes and you just go through seasons and in your life where it's very unbalanced and you just kind of mm -hmm. accept the fact that that's what it is and then there's sometimes with dina and i will joke that there's some days we're just like twisting our thumbs with nothing to do and then it's like boom like the next day it's like we can't even breathe you know so yeah. Um, I think it's just riding that wave as a, as an entrepreneur and, but also always prioritizing your family. Um, and we also, I think just also having a, a good team of support. Like we, like I said, I have wonderful teachers and Dina and I have two really great managers that like protect our, me and Dina's energy. At, so in the evenings we can, Dina and I typically leave there around two so we can go get our children. And then that way our managers have it from there. So that way if like the teachers need anything they they can talk to the manager so kind of having the right people in place i think helps with balance for us that is cool um this was some great advice i was going to ask you so what would you uh some advice you would give to an entrepreneur but you just gave it <laughs> so uh, i think it is structure and not taking on too much and knowing that as an entrepreneur that you're not good at everything you know and you need to have a team around you you need to have those that those people that are good at certain things because i think a lot of business owners i mean you're good at what you do and business owners a lot of times not everyone but i think there's those business owners that think that they can do it all like then and then they they get in trouble versus or why is the brand not uh expanding you know and it's kind of like you're you're trying to do everything at one time instead of and i think maybe and, and tell me if this is um I think some entrepreneurs and business owners, they, they want to have control over everything. And it's hard for a business owner to give somebody control and maybe trust because they trust that maybe they're not going to run it the way they want to run the business. Or um, So I think a lot of times 
it's it's hard for for someone uh, a business owner to give up control or to trust somebody else to run a part of the business. Yeah, I think that it could absolutely absolutely be that. I think it's a combination of control. I think it's a combination of maybe trying to cut expenses. But the way that I've I Dina and I've like kind of looked at it is that if we relinquish control over the things that we're not good at or the things that we'd rather not deal with so that we can be with our families, Mm -hmm. we're not just like bleeding money out of the business through expenses. It's we're taking care of the business. So it has the capacity to bring more people on. And at the end of the day, when you put the right people in place and there's enough people doing what they need to do, you're going to make more money. Exactly more clients. And um, yeah, so it's like putting the right, and for also, I think a big part of it is in the very beginning, when we opened 12 South, Dina and I were there all the time, constantly, and kind of being an example of how we wanted the business to be run by us, our, us being there and doing it. So the teachers kind of saw, and now they know what, what we expect when we're not there, if that makes sense. Exactly. No, it totally makes sense. So how does, uh, how does someone get a hold of you? I know the, um, uh, was it FahrenheitYoga.com? Uh, you're on social media. What social yeah. media platforms are you on? We're on, we're on um, Facebook and we're on Instagram, but mostly active on Instagram at just Fahrenheit Yoga is the handle. And um, you are welcome to get a hold of us at info at FahrenheitYogaStudio.com is our, is our email address. And I'll put that on there when uh, I publish the uh, the podcast, and uh, I'll send you I'll send you everything. I'll put all your contact information and link to the website on there as well. And um, so, well, Nora, it was really really good to see you again, um, and it was such a pleasure meeting you that day uh, in the bank and being able to have a, a great conversation uh, with you and. Uh, all the success that you and your sister are having with uh, the Fahrenheit yoga. And I mean, I mean, nowadays you hear so many different types of yoga. I mean, goat yoga, where I guess you do yoga with goats all around you. And let me ask you this before we leave, what's the craziest type of yoga that you've seen or heard of? I have heard of naked yoga <laughs> and I heard naked that it's- yoga. It's done on the rooftops of New York City. And I, we've had some inquiries, like random people emailing us. Do you guys do naked yoga? We're like, we don't do that here. Like, you'll have to go to New York or LA for that stuff, you know? I think that's... That is funny. <laughs> have you ever been in a, in a goat yoga studio? Have, I've never been to a goat yoga um, class, but I've heard... I've, I did a photo shoot for... Um, for a yoga company and there was goats involved with like they were just jumping around and it was odd how do you do yoga with I just don't understand like how do you on you there's it's so cute but I just I mean I found it a little bit distracting yeah (laughs) there's bunny uh there's dog yoga wow I guess anything could be done with yoga I guess (laughs) Well, thank you so much for coming on, Nora. I really appreciate it. I know your sister wasn't able to join us, so that means we get to do another one down the road. Uh, would, would love, love to. Yes, would love to. And I uh, can't wait to get this um, information out and the conversation out to those that listen to us and are going to watch uh, watch our interview. And so with, uh, with that said, any parting words that you'd like to leave with our listeners or viewers? Well, I'm just really grateful that I was on here and um, thank you for your time. And I think the, I think the only thing that I would say is one of my favorite quotes is if you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. And I really, that's a good one. Right. I really truly believe that if you have this like authentic desire in your heart to serve, whether that like with you, with your, your nonprofit, like, and all the things that you do, because I feel like it comes from a really beautiful, pure, like heart centered place Mm -hmm. that just comes into fruition based on like that. And so I think that if you really have this desire and you have this clear and clear vision of where you're going, it's bound to happen. It's just a matter of, of time. Awesome. Well, with that said, thank you so much for coming on and joining us uh, on the Breakthrough You podcast. 
Uh, like I said, I'm super excited to be able to get to uh, have you and your sister on next time. And without um, any delays, thank you so much. We'll stay in contact. And man, you have given us given us a lot of wisdom, a lot of information. I know a lot of entrepreneurs that are going to be watching this are going to be, um, you're going to help a lot of, of people because uh, learning from either, you know, mistakes or just, you um, like, oh, I didn't see that. And so uh, a lot of people that are uh, going to be listening and watching are going to be uh, taking a lot of value away. So thank you so much. Thank you. It's such an honor. Mm -hmm.